Am I okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, perfect. Welcome. Thanks for your patience. And we're rolling so you can say your name and out. Let him begin. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. Look at us matching. I know. What is this power color moment? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. I'm Liz Smith. Um, thank you so much for joining us here at Bossup. Extremely excited to speak with you today. Thank you. Likewise. So let's get right into it. Um, people have been clamoring about Octavia Butler projects for some time now. Can you talk about the pressure of helping to carry on that legacy? Um, there's a lot of pressure. I mean, I am one of the number one fans out here. And so I, I, every day I realize if I weren't making this, I'd be one of those people clamoring. So <laughs> I come with a lot of respect <laughs> for that group. I mean, I I'll say what's really funny is when we um, began developing this project around 2016, you could not get Octavia Butler arrested in California. <laughs> like it was wild and it's been really profound and such an honor to watch the world kind of catch up to her and to watch Hollywood catch up to her. And I have to say, I'm more excited than anyone for all the various projects that are in the, in, in the making. Like, I feel like why not let this be the next iteration of her legacy? Sounds good. Great. Mm -hmm. Um, what creative liberties, if any, were you giving to bring Butler's novel Kindred to life and what did the process look like? Mm. Well, you know, I worked really closely with the estate, um, which at the time when we were developing was represented by Marilee Heifetz, now represented by Jules Jackson. And they really gave me their blessing. They said to me they felt like Octavia would understand that the, this show would have to be made for now in the same way that her book was written for the now of her moment. And and they have been like nothing but supportive with all of the kind of changes we've made, which have not been that many, but they've been, you know, profound in some way. And can you tell me again, what was your second half of your question? Um, what did the process look like? Oh, uh, in terms of building out the world and adapting it, you mean? Um, you know, it was very long. I mean, you sort of spend a lot of time kind of, I spent a ton of time personally doing a lot of research, really familiarizing myself with her notes for the book and just all the scholarship around the book and her drafts of the book and really just trying to yeah. find my way into how to make it a television show. And there were a million bajillion drafts over the course of about six years. But, you know, every once in a while, there'd be a real aha moment that would kind of launch us into the next phase. And really, it was just about, A, trusting her work and her thought to kind of guide me, but also just like trusting my instincts ultimately. And, you know, okay. in t the summer of 2020, the pilot was ordered and we were off to the races, you know, and here we are now. Nice. Congratulations. That's Thank total. And now, um, sometimes in our community, you'll hear a lot of African Americans say that they've grown weary of slave like films and television shows, and some even suffer from the unseen side effects of these projects. However, what do you believe sets the series apart, and what impact do you hope to leave on the Black community? Mm. You know, I think ultimately this book and this series is about re-examining our assumptions about what we know about the past and about our own history and trying to find new ways into thinking about it that might refresh our appetite for being willing to understand ourselves and see ourselves and in our, where we've come from on screen. You know, I think uh, this isn't one of the shows or projects that wants you to debate whether or not slavery was good or bad. Like, if you have to do that, you have bigger problems, right? But we're asking right. what you would do now, right? This is a story told from the point of view of a contemporary young black woman living in Los Angeles, right? Her experience of slavery is filtered through all the things that we know and see and taste and touch and take for granted. So I think that if anything, that's what's always set the book apart and I hope is what will set the show apart. I love that. Um, now, before I let you go, did you learn anything new about American history from working on Kindred that maybe you didn't know beforehand? Mm. I mean, yes. I mean, you know, I worked with some incredible uh, designers, uh, prop designer especially, Will Blunt and his daughter Bree did incredible amounts of research into the material life of slaves as it was lived. And we had Jerry Fleming, who was an incredible production designer. And I learned that, like, you know, in our imaginations, we think of these plantations and these homes as, like, very drab and kind of dry. But, in fact, their lives right. were full of color, you know. And that right. there was really a practice. I mean, one of my favorite details is that a lot of the, you know, you were given kind of uniform as a slave, but a lot of these women would like embroider it and do things to make it their own. So there was always these small forms of self-expression that were taking place and happening at the time that, of course, are lost to history and lost to the textbooks. But that right. to me is like the truest um, reminder of the humanity of these folks. 
Yeah, I love that because I actually did notice that. It was one scene and I was just looking at like the home, the slave house. I was mm-hmm. like, what? This nice actually got a fireplace <laughs> and everything going. So I absolutely love it. Well, thank you again for joining us. I'm super excited to finish the series and just continue to keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Of course. Have a good one. All right, team, let's cut.